We've all had those people in our lives, those who have influenced us greatly. I, uh, I met with the two, the two twins today, Jean and, and Jane, they've been in my office, and they were telling me about when they were teachers uh, for little kids, and some of the things that they had taught their kids and, and tried to instill in them, they still remember. The, the, the mother still sends cards years after the event happened because they had made such an impact on their kids' lives. And we've all had mentors or teachers who do the same thing. And they kind of know us and they get, they get us. And they know what makes us tick and what will be meaningful for us. Um, I have Jesus. We have Jesus here who had a, a mixed bag of people, uh, of fishermen and tax collectors and, and what have you. A whole different group. Uh, they all learn differently, I'm sure. And throughout his ministry, Jesus was showing them what it was all about. Whether he spoke the word and they heard it auditorily, or he showed them so they visually saw what he did. Or he got in the dirt and he, and he showed them, rubbing dirt on eyes and, and, and he, making people see and, and touching people and make them, making them walk and raising people up from the dead and all these kinds of things. The disciples had many different ways, and Jesus was the consummate teacher. He showed them what it was like, what life was, could be like uh, for them. Uh, they were still, in, in a way, not understanding because they were so culturally driven one way and culturally nurtured a certain way that it went against their grain sometimes. And they had to relearn a lot of what they've had instilled in their minds. So Jesus had a big project, and for three years, day in and day out, he was showing them this. And then this night, and he, he knows what's going to happen, uh, even as he knows someone will betray him and his end is near, uh, he doesn't stray from his mission, his, his ministry, and, and who he is. He is still going to wash everyone's feet. Even that Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, he, I'm going to wash his feet. Uh, I'm going to share a meal with everyone at the table. It, it doesn't matter. You know, he, he had his friends, he had people who didn't like him very much. He was betrayed, he felt the hurt, and yet he rose above it. And we look at what God had done for us. God had taken this simple human and poured God's self into this human being, this Christ, and had Christ walk and show us the way. The lengths that God would go for us. I remember hearing a story of, uh, I can't remember, it's, it's a conference for AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, a big regional event, and it's a three-day event. And, and I heard this story, a, 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 young, a man gets up to tell his story, and that's what they often did. And um, he, he began by saying that he was, he was really in a lot of trouble. He had a lot of trouble getting sober. It was just on and off the wagon, weeks at a time, and it was very hard for him to get sober at all in, until he found a, a good sponsor. Now, his sponsor was a Korean War vet, and he had, one of his legs had been taken off by a mine. And so he walked, before prosthetics, he walked with crutches and, and his one leg, and so he would, he would come to this man's house whenever he would call him, and that was pretty often. Now you can imagine in, in, in Minneapolis, in the dead of winter time, after a, a blizzard had gone through and the, the sidewalks and the roads were just icy and snowy. And he was having a terrible time. He was having a terrible time, so what you do is you call your sponsor, and your sponsor will talk you through whatever you need. The sponsor will be there for you, no matter what, day or night, 24-7. And he said he called, this, he called his, his um, sponsor, and, in a, and he, was, uh, he hung up the phone, and uh, he said he wasn't there for more than an hour, and he heard a knock on the door. And here was his sponsor uh, with, with his crutches. And, and this gentleman looked out, and he saw the sidewalk was pure ice. It was just ice. And he, he couldn't believe 
his sponsor had made it to see him. And was, he said, how did you get here? And his sponsor lifts up one of the crutches, a bottle cap, nailed to the bottom of his crutch. He said, this sponsor did whatever it took to be there for me with one leg, two crutches, and two bottle caps. And he broke down and he cried because he missed his sponsor. That meant so much for him. And I can imagine these disciples hearing all this good news and not really knowing what's going to happen next, but feeling the Spirit of Christ and the mandate of Christ saying, you know, I've been with you. I've been with you night and day for three years. You've shown in my mission and your mission now, should you choose to accept it, uh, is to love each other. And it's not the kind of, we had the three Greek words for love down there, and all Jesus ever talks about is agape. The disciples and others are talking about philia, they're talking about brotherly love, and erotic, whatever it has. Jesus always talks about that self-sacrificing divine love that, that goes beyond yourself and to others. And that's what you need to uh, uh, attain, if you can. God poured God's self into Jesus. God did whatever God could do to give us the Word, the living Word, to show us what it was all about. Because they weren't seeing it in their government. They weren't seeing it so much in their culture. They weren't seeing it with Pilate. They weren't seeing it with Herod. They weren't seeing it with a lot of people and a lot of institutions. But here was this bright, shining star example. And Jesus, as humbly as ever could, tells them, this is what it's all about. When you blow away all the puff, when you blow away all the baloney, when you blow away all the things, it's just the relationship, the meaningful relationship that we have with each other. This God-infused, spirit-infused love that goes through us to each other. He's talking to this specific group. He has talked about before, love your enemies in, in, in a broader sense, and that's true too. But he was saying, when I leave, you'll need each other more than ever. You'll have to be sponsors for each other. You'll have to listen to each other's stories. You'll have to tell your stories. You'll have to share yourselves. You'll have to share the love that you see for each other. And, and not only that, it'll brim over into everyone else in your lives. And we've seen some of that in our lives, if you think back. God works through us to others and others to us. The mandate to figuratively wrap yourself in a towel, get down on your hands and knees, wash clean your neighbors, your friends, your enemies, whomever feet is before you. And that's what God mandates and that's what Jesus was all about. Amen.